Lord, a God like you, Lord. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we celebrate your goodness today. We celebrate you today. We celebrate your son, Jesus Christ. We say thank you. You are God. The only true God. You are God. And above you. And besides you. There is no other. That's why we thank you today. We just avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit to speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all be seated wherever you are. I thank God for each one of you today. They that are streaming. They that will be downloading later. We thank God for the many people that I can see from Dubai of course, from, I see some people from Sweden, our friends from London, uh, and other parts of the, of the diaspora. We thank you. We thank you so much, brethren from Kiambu, and even from many other parts of this country who are just streaming and are ready to roll. I want to go to a very familiar story because today I'm talking to someone who feels trapped. Have you ever been in a situation whereby you felt trapped? That means you don't know whether to go forward or whether to go backward. You don't know whether to run or to stay. You have no idea whether to give up or not to give up. I mean, I'm talking to you today who is feeling trapped. The Spirit of God has been speaking to me for quite some time now. And he has been convincing me that one of the problems that we have during this season of COVID-19 is that feeling of being trapped. You feel you don't know where to go. But I want to show you today that there is somewhere to go. I want us to look at the book of Mark chapter 6. We are going to read from verse 45. Then we will go all the way to 52. I know I'll explain a bit on this during this service. Immediately after that, we will have the children's service. And then I'll come back and go on from here. Because when people feel trapped, some feel very empty. Some feel very angry. Some people have wells of bitterness coming out of them. If it's not that, some people just give up. Some people get very, very mad with God. But I want to show you today, as a child of God, there's a way out. Just in case you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to show you that with Jesus, you have a way out. Verse 45 of Mark chapter 6. Immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into the boat and go on ahead of him to be the side out while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When the evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples training at the oars, 
because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought that he was a ghost. They cried because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the laws. Their hearts were hardened. Watch this. There are people that ever felt trapped. They were the disciples of Jesus. Trapped in the middle of the lake. And what made it to us is this. We look at verse 45, the Bible says, it is Jesus that constrained them. It is Jesus that actually pushed them to go into the boat and go over on the other side. This is after he had the you know, he had them feed about 5,000 hungry men. After the men were full, Jesus tells the disciples, get into the boat, go on the other side, go to Bethesda. But I want you to see something very important here. They did not want to go. And I understand them because the last time in Mark chapter 4 that they were in that sea, the Bible tells us that there was a storm. Thank God that Jesus was with them in the same boat. This time he is not, he is not with them. He is telling them, get into that boat, go on the other side. And what happened? What they feared most came into their lives this boat got stuck in the middle of the sea and they are there alone. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to go. Why? No matter how much they tried to steer the boat the right direction, it could not go. It could not go. It could not move because the waves that kind of storm was making them I mean, go round and round and round. And many times when we are trapped, we feel we are going nowhere. When we are trapped, we feel that we are no longer in control of our lives. When we are trapped, we feel now the only way out is death. That's where they were. That's exactly where these people were. But there is something that I love so much in verse 52, and this one changed my life. I'm telling you the truth. The Bible says that these disciples had not understood what Jesus was doing with them, had not understood the miracle of the loaves. Why is the Bible telling us that? Because the disciples were in a similar situation just a few hours ago. The Bible comes and tells us, if you look at your Bibles, please, from verse 30, Jesus is going to have, you know, is going to have the disciples get into a boat, go to a solitary place because he wanted them to relax. He wanted them to have, you know, some time to eat. But the Bible tells us that the people discovered where they were and came rushing. When they came rushing, the disciples found themselves 
in a solitary place, no kiosk around, no market around, 5,000 men, men alone, leave alone to all the women and the children. They are, I mean, they are hungry. They are exhausted. And Jesus tells them, give these people something to eat. It's like Jesus is putting them in a dilemma. Give them something to eat. But the Bible comes and says, the disciples told Jesus, send them away. Please, send them away. Because even if we were to take one year's wages of one person, it would not be enough to give them just one or two mandazis or one or two bags each. I mean, it's nothing. But Jesus comes and tells them, what do you have with you? They said there is a boy here. He is not even among us. It's just a boy who came with them and he has five loaves, two fish. Jesus said, that's all that I need. There is something I want you to get. With Jesus, that feeling of being trapped is nothing but a feeling. I'll say that again. It is a feeling. You cannot be trapped when you have Jesus. He always has a way out. I'm going to say that again. With Jesus, that feeling of being overwhelmed, that feeling of being trapped, that feeling of being besieged is nothing but a feeling. That's what they had not understood. They had not understood that what is playing around in their lives is nothing but a feeling. The reality is the one with them is the way out. The one with them cannot lie. If he says feed them, he knows what to do so that they can be able to feed the multitude. If the one with them once he speaks he knows how to back his word. He cannot lie. He cannot change his mind. And there is no circumstance that can intimidate him. There is no circumstance that he cannot change. Now, this is so vital. That's why the Bible says in verse 52, there is something the disciples had not understood. They had not understood that with a Jesus, when you have Jesus with you, that feeling of being besieged, you feel trapped. You feel you have no way out. You have hit your rock bottom. It's nothing but a feeling. The reality is there is a way out. I'm going to say that again. This is what they have not understood. And Jesus, the Bible is saying this because they had Jesus in Mark chapter 4, beginning, you know, and in Mark chapter 4, beginning verse 35, if, if my memory serves me right, the Bible comes and tells us that Jesus tells them, let's go over on the other side. But they find themselves being tossed up and down. Jesus is with them. They didn't feel that they would make it. But somehow, somehow, when Jesus rose up, he just rebuked the winds and they died down. What am I saying? I'm saying this. Let's not allow feelings to control our lives. The just shall live not by feelings, but by faith in the Son of God. Let's not allow the enemy to use feelings to manipulate our lives. It is just a feeling. 
What does the Bible tell me? The Bible tells me, Mark 6, 45, Jesus constrains them. They are afraid to go. They really don't want to go into the boat. But Jesus tells them, guys, let's go. I mean, I want you to go on, on Bethesda as I bid the crowd bye-bye. They head into the boat. They start going across. And the Bible says, Jesus was left behind praying. He was walking for them behind the scene. It's not that he was absent from their lives. He was absent by sight. But he was not absent in the spirit. He was still with them. He was left behind, walking behind the scenes for them. He was praying for them. Remember, even Peter, Jesus told him, Peter, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed for you. There is something I have done behind your scene. Some, something, there is something I have done where you, you, your two eyes cannot see. And I can tell you, your faith will not fail. Your faith will continue to stand. You, you will not end up a wreck. You will go through pain. You will go through failure. But at the end of the day, you will be up and running. Wait a minute. Jesus was left. I'm in praying for these disciples. And there are, may I tell you today by the word of God, what Jesus is doing for you what the Holy Spirit is doing for you and for me, what God is doing for you and me during this season of COVID-19, what he is doing behind the scene, only eternity will reveal. The enemy wanted to destroy the church completely. Plan of the devil with this COVID thing was to destroy the church completely. But can I tell you, the gates of hell, the gates of hell. And we are speaking to those gates right now. The gates of hell will never prevail against the church. We are coming back stronger. I declare that by the word of God. There are things God is orchestrating behind the scene there where we cannot see. And they are much more than what any one of us can imagine. The Bible says when the disciples started to go and the storm rose up, I mean, they did their best, but their best was taking them nowhere. When we feel trapped, we do our best, and we feel our best is taking us nowhere. By the way, that's where we get frustrated. That's where many times we, if we are not careful, our frustrations can be projected to the wrong people. The Bible comes and says that Jesus was seeing them straining and he came walking on the same water that was meant to sink them. And the Bible comes and says, as he walked by, they could not even recognize him. Can I help you? When we feel trapped many times, our vision is lost. We lose sight of God. We forget that he has helped us before and he is ready to help us now and he will be ready to help us tomorrow. I'll say that again. He will be ready to help us tomorrow. This reminds me of the fact that as Jesus was about to pass by, the Bible says, and they were so much afraid, Jesus just hopped into the boat and the wind died down. And when the wind died down, immediately they found themselves on the other side. What am I talking about? That feeling of being trapped 
is nothing more but a feeling. I'll say that again. Whether it is be you feel trapped because of lack of finances, you feel trapped by a certain circumstance or situation or storm, you feel trapped by certain individuals who may have betrayed you. You feel trapped in that business. I say by the word of God, it is but a feeling. Every time God wants to do a miracle in your life, one of the things that he does is to make sure that you are depleted. That means there's nothing you can do about it. In other words, when it looks like God has set you up, he has not set you up for failure, but he has set you up for a miracle. I'll say that again. When it looks like God set you up and you are in the sea alone, he has only done that because number one, he said he gave you a promise you are going to Bethesda. And number two, he has a, a miracle just Round the corner. Go with me to the book of Exodus. Chapter number 14. Very familiar scripture that I love so much. So, so much here. Yeah. I love my Bible. Chapter 14. This is what the Bible says. Then the Lord said to Moses, verse 1. Tell the Israelites to turn back and to encamp near Pihath between Migdol and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite Baal Zephon. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is God putting these people in a trap? That's, you know, a natural mind would think so. Because fellow will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And our heart and the heart, Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I'll gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So, the Israelites did this. That which is trapping you. The storm that is swirling you around. Please listen to this. That storm that seems to be spinning you around. God has been waiting for it so that he can gain glory over it. When God is going to gain glory, that means you are going to receive a miracle. He told the children of Israel, I want you to go, let me put it in a simple way, near the sea, and the Pharaoh there will think that you are going nowhere. He is going to come after you, but when he comes after you, Thinking that you are trapped. Thinking that you are going nowhere. That's when I'll unleash my power over him. That's when, you will, that's when the world will see. That's when Egypt will see that there is a God behind Israel. And I'm going to say by the word of God. When they think that the church is trapped, they will see our God. When they think that you are trapped, when Pharaoh thinks that you are trapped, that's when he will see your God. 
That's when he will see my God. When he thinks that you have nowhere to go. When he thinks that you are wandering in the, in the wilderness, in confusion. The Bible says, Pharaoh will think that you are just wandering around. You have no way out. Pharaoh will think that, I mean, you are confused. Because there is nothing you can do for yourself. The years are going. The business has gone down. Everything looks downhill. That's what he will think. But listen to this. That is Pharaoh's thoughts. That's not God's thoughts. And that's not the reality. There is Pharaoh's thoughts. And there is the reality. There is your thoughts. But there is the reality. The reality is that you are not trapped. You have been set for a miracle. When you think you are trapped, when your enemy thinks you are trapped, God says, I have set him for a miracle. I have set her for a miracle. I'll show my glory. I'll unleash my power. I will be glorified by the Egyptians. And watch this. When the Israelites did that, and the Bible says they saw Pharaoh coming. Oh, they were afraid. My goodness, they were afraid. Watch this. The Bible says, I'm reading verse 5. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed his mind about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go. And have lost their services. So he had his chariots made ready. And took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots. Along with all the other chariots of Egypt. With officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt. So he pursued the Israelites. Who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots. Horsemen and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped near the scene, near Pihahiroth, opposite Baal Seven. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to Moses. They said, was it not because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm, you will see the deliverance of the Lord. That he will bring you to the, the Egyptians you see today. You will never see them again. The Lord will fight for you you will need only to be still. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In a nutshell, the Egyptians thought these people are confused. They are wandering in the wilderness. They are going nowhere. The children of Israel made a mistake. They said, God, you set us up here so that we can be killed and die. In the hands of the Egyptians, I declare by the word of God, you will not die. You will live to tell of the glories of the Lord. We are, we are not trapped. It is a feeling. And I declare by the word of God, according to the, what David said, we have escaped. We have escaped. The trap has snapped. And it has caught nothing. We have escaped. Wait a minute. We are speaking to the Egyptians. We are speaking to the world. We are speaking to the powers of the air. We are speaking to demonic forces that are behind COVID-19. The trap has stopped. It has got nothing. We have escaped. We have escaped. We are escaped. 
and the glory of God will rest upon us even more than ever before in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us the Egyptians said they are trapped. The children of Israel said we are trapped. No, 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 no. Listen to this. The world says we, they are trapped. We cannot say we are trapped. I declare by the word of God, we have a way out. It is but a feeling. It is by a feeling. And every feeling must go away. There is no feeling that comes to stay. We declare the reality was the children of Israel had been set up for a miracle, not for destruction. Pharaoh is the one who was being set up. I declare to the powers of the air, I declare to the spirits behind COVID-19, you have come right into the trap. You think we are in a trap? You have come into the trap. We have escaped in the name of Jesus. Watch this. It's but a feeling. I'll declare again, it is but a feeling. We are not trapped. We are not saying COVID is not there. We are not, I mean, if COVID-19 or whatever you call it. We are not saying that we will not do the hand washing. We will do it big time. We are not saying we will not put them out. We will. But I want to declare by the word of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we are not trapped. Let the devil know that. The gates of hell will never prevail against the church. The Bible says, God told Moses, Moses, tell the people to stand still. What does that mean? Let them hold their peace. Nothing is going to go wrong. Nothing is going to change the plan of God. God said you are going to the promised land. Nothing is changing that. Our God cannot lie. He will never lie. I'll say that again. He has not changed his mind. He said the gates of hell will never prevail against it. He has not changed his mind. He has not changed his mind over your life. Yes, you feel trapped. Especially when the, you know, the ears start moving and they go and they go and the enemy starts to preach. Now look at yourself. The business starts to go down. He tells you, look down, look, now, now, look, look, look. Tell that devil it's but a feeling. It's but a feeling. And I declare by the word of God, I don't know how long, how long it has taken you. For the disciples, the Bible says in Mark 6, at 4, Mind you, they had left in the evening. So we are talking about 10 or so hours. They have been in the sea 10 or so hours. I don't know how long it has gone on. That feeling of being trapped. I don't know how long it has to go and taken. But it will take only one step of Jesus into your boat into your situation and it will be calm. We want to worship this God. We want to worship him with our tithe and our offerings. We want to bless his name. We want to exalt him. We want to declare by the word of God that feeling is not the reality. That feeling is not the reality. I want us to pray for the tithe and for the offering. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you so much. All of you who have been sending your tithe and our offering through the Mpesa, 
Those of you who have been putting money in our accounts, and the, I am talking about the church account, those of you who have been bringing your monies, we just say thank you. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for your faithfulness. May God reward you richly because he is faithful. He is faithful. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, step into our boats right now. Jesus, there is that boat of that individual. And it's being carried everywhere by the storm everywhere but not the right direction. Step into it. Step into that life that is feeling lonely. That life that feels confused. That life that is so much full of fear. That life that feels trapped Step into it right now in the name of Jesus. Just jump into it. And I declare those waters, those storms, be quiet in their lives in the name of Jesus. And I declare an acceleration to their destiny. As it always happens when you step into our boats. After all, you have been praying for us all this long. Thank you for they that are tithing today. They that are offering sacrifices today. They that are bringing their thanksgiving offerings and their vows. I just want to bless each one of them. Thank you that you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name.